Okay, good evening to all of you again. I come from Centrum. This is our new campus. Evitus International School is an independent co-educational day school for local and expat students from grade 1 prep to grade 12. So share a little bit about our story. Evitus International School start in 2016. It's three room campus located at the Bukit Mera Center. Within four years, we grew quite phenomenally. So now we had three campers in Singapore. We had uh, two campers in Hong Kong. We also had campers in Cambodia. Invitor's family is our rich campers, also start from this year. I think this July, we will going to run the summer camp also. This is our recent animation. Okay, I'm not ready to read everything. But we always put our mission into practice by helping students. So during the circuit break, this time, so some families actually face some finance problem. So our school wrote out the supporting package to help this family too. Our new campus located in Selungun area is near to the Ferry Park MRT station. It's a very common place for students to come to school. I will show you the proposed build. This new environment must be loved by our students. Okay, it's time to introduce myself. Again, my name is teacher Julia Jiana. I have 20 years experience in teaching Chinese. So I hold a Bachelor of Arts in Chinese Language and Literacy, Diploma in Art Education. Before I joined Invitors International School, I'm the founder and managing director of Joy Little Schoolhouse. This is the first Chinese immersion preschool in Singapore. I started my own center in 2009. At that time, the Chinese preschool not really well received by the public yet. During the following 10 years, I started to do the exploring and practicing in immersion program. Prior to that, actually, I'm the senior Chinese teacher work in We Care. This is an early intervention center. So I have the chance to teach the special needs children about six years. So this is really challenging work, but developed me a lot, a lot of patience and love for the students. Compared to that, I'm the trans teacher and supervisor working in China. Okay, this is our core values. These values will always be implemented in our daily teaching management, six of them. If it is learner profile, we want to cultivate our students are open mind and can adapt to any change in the future. So this learner profile is very important for us also. Innovators International School is IPC school. IPC is International Primary Curriculum. So they have the three characteristics. But as a prep class, we more focus about engaging the children. As a teacher, we have to understand our students better in order to teach them well. So if the parents, you have five years children at home. Please recall and think. Is that your children have the development disease also? The first one is the children like to, to do the sports. They are full of the allergy. So during the home-based learning, I have my Zoom lesson. The parents always feedback back to me. It's difficult to catch students sit in front of the screen. So even uh, you know, during my lesson, sometimes the students play and hide and see under the table. So they hardly to sit. The children also love drawing. I remember last time I had the boy, is very shy. He hardly to communicate with the students and with the teacher. So I prepared actually the scratching book for all of the students. I let them to do a lot of drawing. So I noticed this boy actually like to design, you know, different QR codes. They like to design different uh, language. It's very funny. So based on that, I start to talk about his drawing. Slowly, this boy had the time to share, you know, the favorite things with the others. He slowly built up his confidence. On this age, the children also like to be following and be, want to seek a lot of attention. Very, very important part is this is the critical period for students to learn the language, special reading skills, vocabulary, and oral language. What is the immersion program? They had two categories. One is the Chinese language and literacy curriculum. Another one is subject matter curriculum. So what that means? This means we use Chinese language to learn multiple subjects. The Chinese and the partner subjects are equally important. So this is two different parts. Okay, I will explain in the uh, Evators uh, Immersion Bilingual Program with a simple animation. Hope you can understand. This is an IPC. 
IPC is our core program. IPC is a subject learning. So what included? So it could include science, history, sociality, geography, arts, music, IT, ICT, international, technology, and PE. Did you notice that this not include language? But it's language for us is important. So based on the unique topic of the unit, we develop the language topics. So this includes all the language learning part like literacy, vocabulary reading, sentence writing, even high opinion. But for students, for this age the students, if you teach just that sing, single, you know, the content and form, the students will not really to maintain this interest to learning Chinese. Even sometimes from the beginning part, it looks interesting already. So we must introduce this one, picture book. Normally, the, many, many of the teachers who are holding the picture book, they like to tell the story, to teach the language from the story book. But actually, the picture book have the rich content, can help the teacher to develop a lot of activities in different areas. It's such as language and literacy, so we can still reinforce uh, students' language with the picture book. They had a math activity, science activities, art and craft, music, social skills, motor skill development, then Chinese culture. So all these different activities combined with IPC subject, then this is our integrate course. Why we choose the integrate course, this kind of model for our students because our children are only five years old they learn the things by interact with others and things around them our children not divide the content into the subject they don't know how to do that so they also learning the new knowledge through observation inquiry exploration also our children himself is experience personal experience integrate learning can help the young children link knowledge in different learning areas. Okay, I will talk a little bit more about the language topic. Language learning content is the basis for mastering Chinese. And this important part which cannot be ignored. I summarize five content for this language topic. It is uh, efficient literacy, vocabulary learning, early reading, picture book, and basic pinyin. So for our students must learning some characters. Then they can start to do the reading. Vocabulary also can help our children to understand others what they talk about that. So also can help them to express themselves. So if you notice, our children sometimes tell the things, tell the people, not only the whole sentence, it's just the words and phrases. So vocabulary is very important. So one, we teach the student to learn the Mandarin, to learn to speak Chinese. At the beginning part, we must make sure they had the correct pronunciation the correct tones. We had the four tones. So if students can master them very well, we can see the students can speak very good Chinese. 我们就是说他们是字正腔圆,是很好的标准. Also, in the future, I think our students may not be able to write all the Chinese words, but they must know how to tap in computer. So this is very, very important. The mainly input method for typing the Chinese is high repeating. So we must learn now. Why? Do you remember that there's a critical period for students to learn the language? So that means if in the future, when the children grow up, maybe they learn the same contact, but probably have to spend more time to learn the same contact. So this is the right time now. Okay, I will give some example. But before that, I will share two very important points. Uh, by the research, right, number of most frequently used Chinese characters is just about 140. Frequency of use is 50%. What that means? That means if you learn all its 140 characters, then you go read the newspaper, the 50% content you may understand. Okay, so that's why it's important to learn that. Okay. So these are five type characters here. These are the top five frequency words. If I start to teach you now, the 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 e e e si 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 la la la. Okay, I repeat a few times. I go back to the first one. Do you think the children can remember this? It's very hard. But if I make these five characters into a sentence structure, just like this, 我是一的了. But I I may maybe choose some uh you know tools from the songs. They're quite familiar about that. We can try to sing it. 
Do you know how to sing uh, You Are My Sunshine? Maybe you can follow me to sing together. 我是一的啦,我是一的啦,我是一的啦,我是一的啦。Okay, few times. You ask your children to repeat. They can do it. So that is the interesting way we teach to know the characters. Okay, look at the second line. Oh, this is another 12 characters. The level of, of the difficulty is uh, be increased. I cannot use the same way. I cannot always use the fresh cards. So children will not interesting to learn every, everything. I will try to make them, three of them together, make it like a group like this. Okay, then I put some rhythm for them, let them to try to read together. Okay, you feel it. If I teach the second line, it's like this. Bu, ren, zai, ta, yu, zhe, ge, shang, men, lai, dao, shi. What are you feeling? Even for, for adults, are you feel boring? It's hard to remember. But the third line, try to follow me. Ren bu zai. 有他们上来时到这个 So they have the rhythm, more interesting for students. They also look neat, it's less scary. Few times, the children will memorize the faces, the three of the characters together, then try to recognize everything. Okay, this is a 17 characters. After just teach 17 characters, we actually can ask the students to start to do the reading already. Reading, I mean, is not just read the stories. We can read some vocabulary and faces, just form with these 17 characters, okay? Actually, I try to form the new vocabulary and faces. It's about, I think, 20 plus. Okay, let students read them together. This is developed. The students is the reading skills use this way yeah language learning content in the picture books why i like the picture books because we learn the characters we learn the vocabulary the students must practice consulate use their maybe uh certainly environment let them to practice what uh, will we will help them well i think it's a picture book picture book is uh experimental in link the language learning and develop com comprehension language activities so I will show you the sample, how we can reinforce the language use uh, lang uh, picture books. Look at the first picture book, this is a title page. This is title is Busy Talk. So from the picture, can you roughly know what kind of connect contact we will teach the uh, students? Yeah, see, we had the building, different places, transposition. Okay, the people working in different places, we can teach occupational. Okay, the second one. Look at the cover page. Obviously, we will teach about the animals. Okay, the third one. The title is My Father. Yeah, we will talk about your father. So this is can be used in the life. When the students learn something, learn some work, can talk to, to his daddy. Okay, the unique charm of the picture books. What is a picture book? Picture book is a story book based on pictures. So they had a rich language features. We read picture language unique creative thinking. Picture book is not just set the children to learn language, but also can help the children to build the whole world and cultivate the multiple intelligence. So I think the picture book is the most suitable book for students to read. Okay, right now, I will introduce some different styles, illustration. So now, please don't just use your eyes to look at this picture, also use your heart to feel it, okay? Let's appreciate the first one. This is the simple black and white drawing. This is actually this hand painting. The students like to do it. But can you think about that? Why they had a white dot on that? Do you know this drawing from which book? If I tell you this book is called The Hungry Caterpillars. So do you know the answer? Why they had a white dot? It's very interesting. So yeah, this is uh, about animals. They just use the construction paper, cut and paste to make a different animals. We can do the same activity in the school and maybe you can try at home. Okay, this is a contrast painting. What do you think about this? Yeah, this is a Chinese painting, Chan Yi. 
Okay, yeah, do you know how to create this CV? Actually, this one is very easy to find from our life. It's a dolly paper. So just painting with the dolly paper. Yeah, it's picture done by crayon, color pencil, or maybe watercolor. What do you think? Yeah, this is done by crayon. It's a children like to do it. Yeah, this is a very simple color pencil drawing, but this is a very simple Chinese sentence here also. So they will help students to understand this sentence. Okay, this is oil painting. Can you see different hues of color? This is beautiful. Okay, how about this one? Do you have any idea how to create this drawing? This actually is a uh, bigger model than do the stamping. Okay, the last one is watercolor painting. It's very nice. Okay. The pictures gave us thousand words. So if I show you the one very interesting picture. The children can't wait to talk about that. So, okay, let's look at the first one. Can you feel, feel this picture? Why this bear is so angry? So we can let, let the student to express these pictures. We can ask some questions. What happened about the spectacle? What happened about the ladybird? What happened about these three students? This picture actually show us is a, they play games with the friends. They play head and see. After tell the story, we actually can do the role play in the class also. Okay, can you feel this story full of the love? So with a very simple sentence here, 你回来了, that means you come back. So with this picture, they learn the sentence that very easy for students to understand. Okay, so how about this one? Do you know where it happened? So yeah, so this is happened in the school. Yes, so we can let the students to talk about what happened here. Okay, the last one. Again, there's a contrast painting. So we, we always have put the question, what happened here? What happened in the picture? Why the boy so scary? Okay. Sometimes when we show students, so children the pictures, they even can give you a surprise. They can tell you something you didn't pay attention to. Okay, the parents, look at this toast. Can you, can you see something very interesting? This toast belongs to father. Yes, yeah, this had the same pattern. Okay, we teach the students learn the good Mandarin. Also, we focus about students' holistic development. The first class about cognitive, emotional, social, physical, artistic, creative potential. It will help the students to do the very good development on this age. Okay, now maybe uh, we can work together. Let's think together. So based on these simple pictures, so let's think what kind of activity we can develop for our students. Okay, maybe we try to find any clue for uh, math activities. Okay, I gave you maybe five seconds to look at this picture carefully. Yeah, so actually we can do uh, pairing, pairing the things, and we can do pattern, and then we also can do uh, compare the different sizes. Yeah, some socks for daddy, maybe some socks for the children himself. Okay, maybe we can do the grouping, grouping the thing, socks together, then cut different with a different color. Maybe let me think what kind of activity we can develop about size activities. We can actually let the children to feel the different materials, the texture, the different materials. Yeah. So you have to think why daddy always wearing the same clothes in this storybook. Okay. Then when we're handing up the things become too dry, so we can ask the students, where is the 
water. Why the water disappear? So we can do the water exploration. We also can let the children to think about the uses of different string and rope to find in our real life. So what the different kind of string and rope in the, use in our life? How about the word, uh, motor skills development? Yes, we can do the balance training. Even we can teach the children uh, simple yoga. For the fine motor skills, we can let the student to try to use chopsticks and to pinch the plate. Yes, then maybe we can do the simple uh, cross stitch. For the life skills, we have we had we can uh, encourage our kids to uh, wash the, their clothes, then hanging up to help mommy to do some housework how about the arts activities yes we can design their own socks handkerchief then we can do uh dyeing the old t-shirts so actually it's a lot of activity we can do just single picture we can think a lot of activity so if we hold the whole storybook we can get more activity can let the children to do so if you learn some method like this maybe you can try at home next time okay now i will show you a short video that will Help, in, help you to understand our Chinese integrate courses. So this is about our integrate courses. Okay, this is important information about our school fees. So if the parents interested in you know, our new campus bilingual program, so this is our information. I will leave this page here about maybe a few minutes. If you're interested, maybe you take down the content number. Yeah, you also can scan, scan the QR code, get more information. Okay, I'll be almost done with my presentation. I pass time to Alex. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you, Julia. And yeah. uh, can I invite parents, um, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask your questions right now. We are taking questions. So if you like, you can actually um, start your video and then you can raise your hand or you can actually use the chat function to ask your questions and we will actually ask you to raise your questions from there. Are there any questions from the parents? <laughs> Lily. Yes. Uh, DK. Yes. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Hello. Hi. Thank you for Hello. the presentation. No problem. Thank you for the presentation. Uh, so, it's, this is a bilingual program. Am I understand that correctly? Yes. So it's it's English and and uh, Mandarin. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um. And so the the other curriculums that are for English is same as other Invictus schools within uh Singapore. Okay, maybe I can ask, uh, invite our uh, vice principal Pauline to answer this question. Yeah. Yes. Pauline can help. Yeah. Hi, good evening, everyone. My name is Pauline. Mm -hmm. I'm the VP for bilingual program at Centrium. Mm -hmm. So, uh, TK, to answer your question, yes, we indeed have the same core program, um, which is the interna international primary curriculum across all Invictus schools. But what is unique about Centrium is that there is an emphasis on Chinese as well. So the IPC is developed, um, um, it's, it's implemented, but also at the same time, um, there's, some, there's more emphasis on Chinese. So we'll be using Chinese to teach IPC, 
and also in terms of music, art, and PE, those lessons will also be conducted in Chinese. Otherwise, the other four areas is similar. So we will also be introducing Singapore Max in the Centrum campus. I hope that answers your question. So sorry. So certain certain classes are taught in Mandarin, and certain classes are taught in English. Am I understand that correctly? Okay, we have Chinese lessons every day, and that's just for the language art program. Uh, okay. But besides that, all lessons, um, including, sorry, lessons uh, in music, PE, and art are taught uh, throughout the six years, sorry, seven years in Chinese. And we also have what uh, uh, Julia has just introduced to you, the integrated Chinese program. So for that, we will include things like drama, we will include things like mathematical concepts, and we will also include things uh, with the IPC element. So science, um, a little bit of history will be also taught in Chinese. But as we move towards the older grades, like in grade three, grade four, and so on, um, the Chinese integrated program will then take a lesser content, and um, there will be then more English in in terms of teaching maths and science, because we understand that as our children go to secondary school, they will need to know the concepts, they will need to know the terms um, when it comes to maths and science, history and geography. So okay. there is more emphasis in the early years in terms of uh, Chinese. So we have about 60% of the language and the other content, which is still delivered in Chinese in prep and grade one and grade two. But as they move throughout uh, to to the older grades, then English, science, and the other subject areas will be increasingly taught in English. Okay. DK, does that answer your question? Yeah, so I, I guess the, just, I just want to know like, you know, what percentage of a child's day would be taught in Chinese and how much would it be in English? Um, and how is that different from other programs you guys offer in different campuses? So for prep class and grade one, I think the percentage in taught in Chinese about the 50, 50 percent and 50 percent. Prep maybe a little bit more, but uh, slowly to go to the prep three and four about uh, 40, right, Pauline? Then go to prep six, uh, not grade six. Yeah, the, the English will be higher percentage. Yeah, okay. not Chinese, yes. Cool. So if I may join in, uh, DK, thank you for your very good question. Uh, the program, this program is unique to Centrum campus in the sense that it's highly, by uh, the emphasis on Mandarin, spoken Mandarin, and the Chinese language should be higher. Uh, in terms of our other campus, like Dempsey campus, the students also have uh, Chinese language lessons, except that the emphasis is not as high. So like, for example, music, physical education, the integrated curriculum will be taught in English at the MC campus. Whereas at Centrium, the use of Mandarin will be a lot higher. Okay, I understand. Okay. So in that sense, you have, uh, you have two different very attractive products depending on what you like your child to learn. Whether it's right. uh, English, more English-based uh, medium education. At the same time, Centrium provides your child with a very strong foundation in, in Mandarin. Uh, and I think that the expo early exposure and immersion in the early years will give your child the appreciation of the language, the culture. At the same time, both schools prepare our, our students well such that they can progress on to secondary school. We are, okay. we are offering a very strong secondary school program that will right. enable the child to later complete IGCSE as well as A-levels. So in that sense, okay. uh, both have their strengths and depends on what, what you like for your child. And if you like your child to be bilateral, bicultural, to be able to have a strong foundation in Chinese language, then Centrum will be your choice. Okay. Right? But at the same time, uh, the both camp the different campuses offer IPC as the core curriculum for the primary okay. school. Okay. Okay. Good, Great. Good question, Thank DK. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I think I saw another question from. Uh, is it Mickey? Uh, Mickey, would you like to ask your question right now? Okay, I think Mickey's just stepped out for a limit. Um, is there anybody? Yes. Yes. Hi. Um, my name is Gauri. So I had a okay. question as to how this would practically work. So let's say we have 
a mathematics class. So do you have an English teacher and then a Mandarin teacher in the same class? And how, I mean, how would that practically work? Would the Mandarin teacher then only speak in Mandarin and have her own sort of stations? How, how would that work? Hi, Gauri. Um, thank you for your question. Right, so to answer your question, first of all, when we do Chinese language lesson, only the Chinese teacher is there. The reason being, we do not want the child to be looking for help or translation. So, yes. you know, children being children, or it, they, they are just going to conveniently choose the adults that can un understand them. Yes. So when we do Chinese lesson, it's just only the Chinese teacher. So because of survival instincts, the children will have to learn to make requests. They have to learn to say things like, may I go to the toilet in Chinese or um, can I go and get my water bottle? So the whole idea is that it is a, a pure language environment. So when, when we have the maths teacher coming in to teach mathematics in English, then it's just done in English or for that matter, IPC, it's done in English. So at any one point in time, the child is only going to be speaking one language. The whole idea is that for that, for that uh, child to develop that expertise, and the ability to express themselves fully in their language. So if you do, um, don't speak Chinese at home, that's totally fine because when they come to the school, um, they will just be totally immersed in their environment and all they hear is the Chinese teacher talking to them, singing to them, doing games and, and uh, role playing with them. So in that way, children very quickly pick up the language because they are just, you know, being immersed in that language all the time. Yeah. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Yes, yes, it does. But um, so then does that mean on Monday they would have mathematics in Chinese and then Tuesday they would have mathematics in English? H how would you work the timetable then? It's, it's different for different grades. Uh, as you said earlier, um, in the early years, which is grade one and uh, grade one prep, there's a whole lot more emphasis in Chinese. So a lot of med medical concepts, a lot of um, science concepts that will be done in our integrated program. But at the same time, we do factor for lessons um, in English for mathematics because mm -hmm. it is also important that they learn the right terms, like one more, one less. But they will be learning the concepts in Chinese as well. But as they progress through the grades and the concepts get a little bit more difficult, and um, it doesn't make sense then for, for them to be learning like trigonometry in Chinese because that's not what you use in your everyday life. So the emphasis is on the practical um, language, things that you can converse with, things that you will be um, talking to your friends about. So your hobbies, um, uh, about your family. So again, um, more emphasis is, is given during the early years. And that's when they'll be picking up their, their everyday language in that context. But when they go to grade three, grade four, grade five, you know, what's the point of learning friction in Chinese? It does not help in their yeah. daily language. But they can learn like, you know, how do you come to school? I come to school by taxi. Um, what are your hobbies and things like that? So, so we have a very practical approach and we want the children to feel a sense of success. Meaning to say they know, they know that they can talk to people and people will understand them. So, um, yeah, so it's striking a balance between um, what they need to know in Chinese and in terms of the acad academics, the, the very specific terms that need, they need to know in science and maths. So again, um, we just want them to be very comfortable speaking Mandarin and yet at the same time, in terms of their ac academic development, um, there is a steady progress there. Okay. Um, sorry, just and one last thing. So, would they have Mandarin classes separately as well? Would they have every yes. day? Would they have okay? So every day. Have Forty-five yeah. minutes of Mandarin as well. Mm, no, we are doing better. It's an hour. Oh. <laughs> okay. yes. Yeah, yes. yeah. So okay. throughout the grades from prep one all the way to grade six, we have one hour, one hour of just Chinese language arts daily. Okay. So that that's not inclusive of the integrated program that Julia has just spoken about. Mm -hmm. So that is why we have a very high percentage, at least 60% um, in the early years and then 50%. And then in grade five and six, it's about um, close to 40%. Okay. Yeah, because of that one solid hour that we right. do every day with the children. Yeah. Okay. And um, on top of that, we offer supplementary lessons to children who have a very big foundation. Um, so that happens after school from three to four. 
And again, it is something that is more specific to the needs of the individual child. So for example, if a child is weaker in writing, then that might be a time where we want to focus on that. So um, we are looking for parents and children who are really committed to learning Chinese and uh, wanting to make the journey together with us. Okay, thank you for that. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, can I invite the rest of the parents to raise your hand, uh, give us a tinkle. Please feel free to ask questions. Anybody? I think uh, Mickey was uh, going to ask a question previously. Oh, yes. Thank Welcome you back. for that. Um, yeah. <laughs> that was in the middle of cycling. Well, thank you for that presentation. And I just wanted to ask, when is our Centrum campus would be ready? So when we can be ready, uh, polling? I'll, I'll answer it for you. Okay, thank you, John. <laughs> uh, so, we, so we are looking at... The government allows us to do the renovations. I, I, can't, I can't answer the question uh, any other way because... I don't know when the government will allow us to actually uh, have the, uh, the, the the workers go on site. At the moment, as I understand it, the um, renovations are not allowed to happen because they're, uh, they're prioritizing the workers to do uh, work that was originally agreed or was yes. already in progress. Yes. And then uh, once it becomes available, once the, the manpower becomes available or the situation changes, then we will be allowed to do the renovations. Oh yeah, definitely. The only reason why I ask that is um, I have a daughter who is 12 years old and another son, uh, six years old. So I'm thinking about moving both of them together to Centrum. But mm -hmm. then since because of this re re yeah, renovation, um, are they going to the different campuses for the time being till the Centrum open whenever that would be look uh, we've got our in, we've got an uh, interim space for the, the students to move into uh, and I, I believe it will be fine uh, whatever happens we will run a bus service between Centrum and the campuses so you'll have one pickup and one drop-off space ah, I see well thank you for that um, no the, the only uh, reason why I'm asking is to pick a condo near your school. So I was just wondering um, if, you know, seventh grader is going to be in Dempsey and the first grader would stay in Sen Sentosa. I just wanted to know how is uh, the waiting mm. time till the centrum open? Yeah, it, unfortunately, I can't give a concrete answer because I can't, I can't speak for the government. Uh, yes. And I don't think even the government really understands right now. Uh, mm -hmm. But at some point, uh, once the, the, the once the, once the the situation with the government uh, clears up, or with the with the COVID situation clears up, then I, I believe it'll all be fine. Um, yeah. And that, that's that, that's as much as I think we can anyone can do right now. Yeah. So it's my five-year-old daughter who will be going to the pre the prep school for for Julia and. Uh, Julia actually taught her um, when, when she was very young, so she speaks Mandarin. Well, oh, really? Mm. Yeah. So Mickey, are you... Mm. Um, that's a very good question that you asked. Okay, uh, to share with you, we actually have, uh, like what John mentioned, we actually have backup plans. So one possibility, when, one, two, two possible venues. One will yes. be at Sentosa. We have a beautiful campus at Sentosa. Yes. One will be at Sentosa. And one will be at... Dempsey. So your ch child who is older will probably mm -hmm. be at Dempsey. We have found a very beautiful space uh, yeah. along the stretch of the, the colonial Trump houses. We are, we are in the process of uh, signing the contract. So that will be yeah. at Dempsey. But at the same time, at first, the plan mm -hmm. was to put the grade ones at Sentosa. But what happened was that I think our grade one numbers are increasing. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's the numbers that there's going to be a full class. So if there's going to be a full class, there's the possibility that we may also have the great ones at Dempsey. So oh. you know, that means there's a likelihood that there could be two, both your, we can't, we are not going to, we are going to confirm it soon, but likelihood that both your children yeah. be at Dempsey, so it'd be quite convenient. Oh, and but, but, but this is work in progress. So I just want to share with you some pos the, the possible options ahead. At first, we wanted to put them at Dem uh, Sentosa, but because the response has been so good, we, we actually have, uh, we may have even 
possibly even a second grade one class. So we, we are trying to work out the, the, the details. But what yes. we would like to assure you, like John mentioned, uh, we will yes. take good care of our parents and students. We are actually offering transport from uh, for, for, for parents who have signed up. Uh, if they are going to move to a, uh, an alternative interim location. So thank you for your interest, Mickey. We look forward to welcoming your, both your children. Oh, thank you for the clarity, clarity, Matt. Um, thank you so much for the explanation. I just want them to go to the same school together on the same mm -hmm. bus. That's what I was mm -hmm. thinking, or the same taxi or something like that. Understood. Thank you so yes. much. Thank you. You're most okay. welcome. Thank you, Mickey. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Edmund. And can I invite the rest of the parents to also ask questions before we close the session? Uh, hi there. Um, my name is Christian. Um, I apologize. I actually I just joined about 10 minutes ago. I missed the presentation. Um, so I apologize in advance if I ask some stupid questions that you might have already answered. Um, but I, uh, we are very interested in the bilingual program. Uh, as for my daughter, Ish, she's five. Um, she's currently uh, in a bilingual program now at uh, the Canadian International School. And we actually moved here from Hong Kong. And previously, she, she was in a, a preschool that was Mandarin. So maybe like John uh, was saying, you know, she, I think, has uh, some good comfort with Mandarin. And But I know um, some of the students you'll be taking are maybe brand new to Mandarin. I'm wondering how the teachers are going to maybe continue to challenge the children who have some experience, or maybe you might even have some students that will be native speakers or, or who speak Mandarin at home. Uh, and then you might have some kids who are brand new to Mandarin. I was wondering if you could talk to uh, how you'll be able to, to manage that or what your plan is for that. Okay, hi, Christian. Uh, let me answer that question. Um, we, sorry, uh, Julia, would you like to answer? Uh, it's okay, you, you talk first. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Pauline, 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 maybe you can talk first. Yeah, answer first. Hello? Okay, okay, maybe I answer first. So actually for this age, right, the students is like, it's the mind is, a, you, you can say it's a very big open mind. So let's say some students actually can speak very well, can learn the Mandarin, maybe he had a good foundation, but some is not. But we cannot say, um, how to say, how to say. So it's a, it actually it's a, amazing you know one the this age student joined the program for a while you can see the very different because our language is immersion way so the children actually in the school is almost all the time to hear and listen and speak to the mandarin so that actually the children pick up very fast also the on this age right maybe i add some more so the children actually to like to be a little bit leader so in my class, if the student can speak Mandarin very well, so I will let them to do some role. It's like, a, it's, a, it's a little teacher. Today is a, a, a Jia Jia is a little teacher. So we will help me to teach. So we, 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 we will always can find the, uh, the uh, good way to encourage some students who had a good foundation to lead a student. So for example, even we do the reading, uh, training the students' readings, it's actually quite boring, you know, words and reading. So I always separate the different groups. We do the competition together. So I will like the children to work together, maybe three of them, four of them. So we, we do short time the competition. So the, you will find if the children can speak, speak very good, you know, the Chinese team, very, very happy to be the leader because he will be recognized his Chinese level. But if the children, sometimes the children cannot understand, but if the teacher always, okay, you repeat, repeat, do that, do that, the children feel very uh, embarrassing. But you ask the friends to teach, that's different. You know, so don't worry. So it's actually the children is can very easy to work together, to improve together. Do I answer Great. your question? Pauline, you uh -huh. want to say some more? <laughs> if I may add, Christian, Thank you for joining us. It's good to see you. Yeah. No worries. Uh, if you missed the first part, uh, later on, uh, Alex and his the team will make available this Zoom recording uh, on the school's website. So you can actually listen to the content of uh, Teacher Julia's um, presentation subsequently. Probably, Alex, will it be ready next week? Well, we, we are aiming for that. Yeah, good. Yeah. So once it's ready, Christian, we welcome you to watch the presentation. Uh, so in that sense, you'll get more details. So we actually welcome st uh, students uh, and we will, like what 
Julia mentioned, we'll nurture, uh, we'll nurture the students depending on the cap uh, capability. And on top of that, uh, we also offer additional supplementary lessons from three to four in the afternoons to help the students who need further support. So in that sense, they have, they'll receive uh, in-class support, they'll be in an immersive environment, and, on, and in addition, they also have supplementary lessons in the afternoon. So in that sense, we would like them to learn in a very nurturing, conducive environment. Yeah. All I can say, sorry, I think, I think it was asking is, are, are my children who speak wonderful Mandarin going to feel like they're going to go back to the Mandarin? And, and I can tell you that having my children, my three children, be taught by Julia, they all are fluent Mandarin speakers, and I believe that you'll be able to do more of the same with the bilingual program. And it is my hope that our bilingual program is the best bilingual program in Singapore. Okay, great. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 Sorry, you can, uh, sorry, I think I just got put on mute, but my, my, the goal of this school is to be the best bilingual immersion program in Singapore. And my children are Mandarin uh, fluent speakers, and I want them to be better, or as, as best as I uh, the best program I can provide. And I speak, when, when Puling joined us and she said to me, what's the goal here? I said, the goal is to be proper Mandarin immersion, the best that we can be. And I, and I hope that we achieve that for my own children. Okay, that's good. I mean, yeah, I, I don't have any, I don't have any expectation that my children will be sort of native speakers, but I think, and I heard Puling Lei say when, right when I was joining, I mean, I want them to be comfortable in using the language. That would be the goal um, to, to be able to converse, to speak, um, I, I read. I, I don't know if you teach writing, uh, but certainly reading. Um, I know some people say writing is as important now with everyone typing. <laughs> but um, okay, yeah, that's wonderful. Um, and I, I don't know. I, we're running out of time, so I'll let other people maybe ask if they have questions. Otherwise, I, I could ask another question. But maybe you had answered already earlier. Sure. Okay. Thank you, Christian. Can I invite uh, the rest of the parents, if you have a question, please feel free to uh, start your video and raise your hand so that we can see you. And then if not, then maybe we will just ask uh, Christian, do you have another question? Um, I do, but I'll, I'll give people a few minutes to, sure. or a moment to. Okay. Um, we, don't, we don't see any other parents having questions, okay. so feel free to ask yours. Sure. Yeah. Uh, I guess I was just trying to, I, I, you probably talked about it, understand how, I, I, well, first, I, is, is uh, Julia, is, is, are you the teacher for the grade one prep class? Or I wasn't sure. Yeah. So Pauling is, is probably, yeah, I will teach you the class, but it's not really final okay. comfort yet. <laughs> but I'm waiting to right. teach. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Great. And so I'm assuming the, the way it works is then, I mean, I don't know, uh, I think I heard it was like 60% Mandarin, but so you would be maybe the, the either the primary teacher and then uh, most of the day, I guess, would be in English and then, or I'm sorry, in Mandarin. Mandarin yes. And then they would have, they would have some English lessons where an, another, you would switch with another teacher yes. uh, who would teach English then? Yes. Okay. So the and, Mandarin uh, teacher will be the class teacher so i will stay with the children so almost the full day all the time so the english and maybe math teacher will be the subject teacher when they have uh, have the license so only the the english teacher will be, be, be the class so for prep class right i think if the the class be full so it will be two chinese teacher yeah maybe one is a assistant teacher is a one is a May teacher is it is it correct Pauline? sorry <laughs> if i'm not correct please uh, yeah say something yeah I think we're growing. Uh, our numbers are getting better every. Or our numbers I'm, are. I'm are, not very are, are, sure if you can hear me because we can hear you, Prilling. Please yeah. go ahead. Yeah, because my my internet is kind of wonky right now, so I apologize if you can't hear me clearly. So, um, just to add on to what Julia has said, in the early years, which is Grade One Prep and Grade One, um, if we have a big class, we'll put in another t assistant teacher. So this teacher will then help to take small group as well. So in that way, we can differentiate. Um, I think earlier on, there's a, there was a question about um, children who are of different ability or different achievement. So we have a Chinese uh, teacher uh, as an assistant teacher who will then uh, split the, the class into um, different groups. And then we can challenge the children according to their level. So this is how we are going to be doing the um, Chinese in our school. And um, I think Julia has also said that the 
a class teacher would be the Chinese teacher for the lower grades. Um, but when it comes to the older grades from grade three onwards, then the English teacher will be the uh, class teacher. So the whole idea is that they develop a firm foundation in their early years. That's when there is a window for language development and we want to catch that window. So, um, and once they go into grade three, grade four and five and six, when we, if they have that foundation laid solidly, um, it will be very easy for them to take on the language. Sure. And so then I guess sorry, my I, kind I of last question is then is uh, so then the for the Chinese teacher, let's say if Julia shoots the class teacher and and, it, and it's Mandarin time, I just want to uh, uh, I guess confirm then it would be exclusively uh, Mandarin. You wouldn't be using English in combination. No. You wouldn't be no. translating. It would be a immersion environment and, yes. and vice versa with uh, English. Okay. Yes. Yeah, right. I just gave an example because uh, Thursday I have the lesson in Sentosa. So the class, yeah, actually the children always very, very big, you know, the uh, Chinese speaker. So they you have to understand. So when they do the art and craft, I ask them to write the name. So I just keep saying Xie Mingzi, Xie Mingzi. I keep saying many, many, many times and do the action until the students understand. So that's the way I'm going to like them to learn Mandarin. So at the beginning part, it's, it's hard, you know. We always have to like to talk, talk, talk to ourselves. But slowly, the children will observe the Chinese. They will understand. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure because I know... For some um, schools, you know, they especially if they have, let's say, um, uh, a teacher who is comfortable, I guess, in English and Mandarin, and then they will sort of switch uh, back and forth, which um, I guess, I mean, in some ways it's nice, but in other ways I've read it's not ideal for acquisition. I mean, even when you have bilingual parents, they talk about one, one parent, one language, uh, so that it sort of like... The, the child understands this is my Chinese teacher, I must respond in Chinese and doesn't fall back on, on the language maybe they're comfortable yes. with or vice versa. So yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. great. Thank you, Christian. Uh, can I ask parents if they have any more questions before we close for the session? Nobody? Okay. Well, um, let me just say that thank you so much, parents, for taking your time on a Friday evening to join us. We really thank you for your time. We are Invictus International School. If you want to find out more about us, visit our website, invictus.school, and you'll see that in Singapore, we have actually three campuses, one in Dempsey, uh, one in Centrum, and of course, the last one will be at Sintosa. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us. Uh, you can find all our contact numbers on our website. And if nobody has any more questions, we thank you for your time. And we look forward to seeing you at Centrum. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, Karen. you Julia. Thank you, John. Thank you, thank you Edmund. Thank, thank you, Puileng. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks, everyone. Say something, Elijah.